going on, YouTube? It has been a while since I've been able to actually sit down and pretty much have a talk with you guys. So if you like the new mic, I got a brand new mic. There's, uh, we got some little things. I don't even know if this is supposed to make me sound like a robot. I have no idea. I got this new Go XLR with a brand new mic. So sound quality. I have been dreading this video so much because I actually did make a massive mistake while explaining the wall jump manipulation to you guys. All of my studies and everything that I did were actually wrong. Everything I did was wrong. And I'm making this video to not only apologize, but if anyone ever did that in their speedruns, then they would actually be actively giving themselves wrong subpixel values. So I'm making this video today to not only tell you guys exactly what I did wrong, but to really show you how I could go wrong. How exactly did I go wrong? We did all the testing with the subpixels. What could it be? You guys are gonna be surprised, but also you're gonna think this is so stupid. You're gonna think this is the dumbest thing that can go wrong. Pretty much, you know, what I just said, but I'm gonna show you how I've changed it and how I've developed a brand new wall jump, subpixel manipulation, whole thing. You guys are gonna laugh at how wrong I was. It's gonna take two seconds to explain. You're gonna see it and be like, wow, that's stupid. So um, yeah, let's just jump right in so I can just teach you guys and we can get over my mishaps. I am so sorry, guys. Oh, there you are. What's going on, guys? Welcome back. Uh, the transition was probably two seconds, so you didn't even notice anything. Anyways, for those of you who already know versus those of you who don't know, my coin count is a representation of my subpixel value. Um, a lot of guys, a lot of you guys already know that from, you know, the other YouTube videos I've done. But again, just for demonstration, if I go into a level, you look at my coin count, it's got oscillating values between 14 and 6 right now. And, you know, those are my subpixel values. So the question is, how the heck could I go wrong with that? I have a starting subpixel value of 0. Watch, every time I enter the level, as long as I don't change, my oscillating value is 10 and 2 right now, right? So load the level again, let's do the exact same thing. My oscillating value is 10 and 2 right now, right? And from the video that you guys watched, I based all my theories off of these numbers. Look, I'll enter the level one more time, just so you guys can see, without doing any turnbacks, and no hills, my oscillating value is still 10 and 2, it never changes. It's really consistent. So if I base off all my strategies that I did within the level to get a low subpixel value for the wall jump, how the heck could I go wrong, right? Well, let me tell you something. If I finish a fortress versus a level, the oscillating value is actually going to change based simply off just the fortress. Yeah! So if I, if I go into this level, which is what I did a lot, right? So what I did, you know, for the testing is I'd enter a level and be like, alright, let's see what happens with subpixel 7 or, or 8 or whatever, right? So then I set it to subpixel value 8, then I exit the level because, you know, that's what I can do in the practice ROM. I load up a I load up a star, I save state, right? And now I check see what my oscillating value is. So from subpixel value 8, it's 10 and 2 again. Well, it changed a bit there because I ran in the hill. But at 10 and 2, right? It's the same thing every time. It's the same thing every time. And if I beat a normal level and got the same subpixel value before entering the level of 8, you know, I'd still get the same thing. But not fortresses. It doesn't work with fortresses. So Watch what happens when I get a subpixel value when I beat the fortress. Remember, subpixel value of 8 just from starting the level, right here. 10 and 2. We've seen it happen 6 times already. But let's see what happens when I get a subpixel value of 8 uh, after I beat the fortress. Okay, so we're gonna take damage and save state. So I can set up subpixel value 8. It's gonna be really hard because I'm sliding around on, on all this ice. Almost. Okay, come on. Oh, that was close. Sometimes I feel like I can just randomly land on it. Oh my gosh, keep getting high, high values. Come on, buddy. There we go. Alright, so do you guys remember we hit- we had subpixel value of 8 before we entered the level and we got oscillating value of 10 and 2. So how much do you guys want to bet I'm not going to get an oscillating value of 10 and 2 with my subpixel? So let's save state after I beat the fortress and let's see what it is. Oh look! It's 15 and 3! Awesome! So I was wrong with everything I did. Absolutely every single thing I did I was wrong. All of my studies, all the hours of work to do the level on every single oscillating value and find which ones work and which ones don't, all wrong. However, the good news is, is now that I know that the fortresses actually control the subpixel values differently, all I had to do is redo my studies all over again 
and pretty much just start with the subpixel value from the fortress every time. So there was no fast way to do this. I thought to myself, okay, if I'm going to do this again, I, I'm really going to have to actually create a graph. So let me, let me go ahead and show you guys uh, something that I came up with here. All right, guys, so here it is. This is my table. Because I had to go back and do everything from the fortress, that means all of the stuff that I had planned before didn't actually give me the right subpixel values that I needed. And without getting the right subpixel values, that means all the strategies that I had used were out the window. So I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of all the stuff that I did here super fast so you guys can truly understand uh, what exactly went into this. So at the very top, and I know it's not the easiest to read, but I'm going to explain it so you don't really need to read it and you don't really need to get close to your computer screen or anything like that. The top row right here are subpixel values from 1 to 15, okay? Every time I have to do an individual subpixel value to try and get a good or low subpixel value for the wall jump. So I have to beat the fortress on every single one of these. So there's 16 values, 0 to 15. Every time I do it, I have on the right side here something that I do in the level differently, right here. So right here it says do the level normally but run down the last hill. Then the second thing is do the level normally but jump past the last hill to try and get different subpixel values. Uh, blue means that I get a low subpixel value by doing it and red means that I don't. So I'm just going to use the top row as an example here. So the top row subpixel value 0 after beating the fortress if I do the level normally and run down the last hill, I get a low subpixel value, it works. But if I do, if I beat the fortress with a subpixel value of 1, it also works. But a subpixel value of 2 does not work. I didn't test for 3, because I realized after going through all of the ones that I did, there's no good arrangement of subpixel values that I can set up in a row that actually help me. I can't set up on 13, 12, and 11 because it'd be too easy to hit 14 and 15, and they don't work. I can't set up from 0 and 1 because it would be too easy to land on 2 right here and 2 doesn't work, right? Red means no, blue means good. So let me just do another example here. Uh, normal jump past the last hill right here. Well, 14 and 15 work, but then 13, 12, 11 don't work. So that'd be too easy to screw that up right there. And then look at all these that don't work. So none of these values work. So I had to do each of these about three times. So for the top one right here, run down last hill, do the level normally. For subpixel value, I had to do it about three times to make sure that it worked. So every one of these I had to do three times. So pretty much here is like, it looks like I did 12 times three. That's how many times I did six, eight to see if I get a low subpixel value. Look at how many things I did on the right hand side. These are different ways of doing the level right here. And it took me all the way after doing all of these right here to finally get to one right here. Works, 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 works. And this is legit. There's no way that I can go wrong here because I finally understand that my subpixels are very dependent on how I beat the fortress. Guys, I know this is kind of complex, but I really have to cover my ass here and explain all this stuff to you guys to truly understand. So, I'm going to show you what this line is, what I do in the level to get this low subpixel value. Um, but what works here is subpixel value 15 to 9. That is a very large amount of subpixels that do work. For this one to get all of them work, what I do is I skip all the hills at the beginning. I do a full big jump from the third muncher and I run down the last hill. So let me go ahead and give you guys an example of what that is. First, I have to be in the fortress to get a subpixel value from 15 or 9. So let me show you one more time. Subpixel value 15 to 9, right at the top here. They all work from 15 to 9, right here. They all work tested and studied multiple times. If I skip all the hills, jump from the third muncher, and run down the last hill. I'm going to create a save state. Remember, any value from 15 to 9 will work with what I just said. So what do I get here? I got a subpixel value 14. So through my studies, I know that if I do this very specific thing, skip all the hills, jump from the third muncher, and run down last hill. So let me do it. Let me show you. So I'll save state, and I'm going to walk you through it. So first and foremost, skip all the hills. So as soon as I get P-Speed, I'm going to skip all these hills. Let me try again. I didn't get P-Speed. Okay, so I'm going to start with P-Speed. As soon as I get P-Speed, I'm going to skip all the hills. See, I'm skipping all the hills right now as soon as I get P-Speed. Jump from the third muncher. Boom! Jump from the third muncher and run down the last hill. Low subpixel value. 
I need a subpixel value from zero to five. I got a subpixel value of zero. So now I can do the wall jump. Now this is guaranteed to work because I'm not just going in the level and getting different numbers. I'm doing it from the fortress and that is where I went wrong. Let me go back one more time and show you guys the, the second part of why this is so good. Uh, 15 to 9 is not good enough for me because if I set up a subpixel value and I slide on the ice, look at this. None of the other ones work for this. None of the other ones work for this. Look, subpixel value 15 to 9 work, but then subpixel value 8 to 0 do not work. <laughs> so if I land on anything other than these, this is not going to work. So I went out on a mission and I started to do more things in the level. I started to do more things after to see if I could get low subpixel values work. And I did. I found one that works from 0 to 4. So if I do two different things based on how I set up my subpixel value, I can actually get good subpixel values from 15 to 9 and from 0 to 4. Which means there is only 4 subpixel values that do not work total. I just have to be conscious of where I am. If I move left and I don't move too much, I know I have a high subpixel value. If I move right and I don't end up moving left, then I know I have a, a low subpixel value. So it's actually going to work. So let me just go through one more time with one other way that I'm going to be doing it because I do this in my world record strats. This one is only run on the three hills. So only use the first three hills and then run down the last hill. That is it. So let me go ahead and give you guys an example of what that looks like. I'm gonna, I gotta go back into the fortress again. Remember, like I said, this is where I went wrong. I didn't always go back into the fortress. Now, every time I do this, I have to. So during these studies, I probably did 6-8 um, over 400 times during this graph. Over 400 times easily, because I have to keep doing all of this and constantly keep testing it. So subpixel value of two is determined to work. I said from zero to four. So, if I knew in a run that my subpixel value was low, which I have ways of knowing, um, explained through other videos, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to only use the three hills, and then I'm going to run down the last hill. Okay, so let's go ahead. So, I'm going to get my P-Speed, and I'm going to only use the first three hills. Okay. So, build P-Speed. Only use the first three hills. Oh, whoops, I'm sorry. I actually need to run down the last hill, obviously. Let's go ahead and try that again. I've done this level so many times. This is me just loading the save state for a com comfortable attempt. Okay, run down all three hills. All right, now we're avoiding all of them. And we're only gonna run down the very last hill. So I'm not gonna jump at the third muncher. I'm just gonna run down the last hill. The subpixel value of two gives me a low subpixel value of three. Now I can do the wall jump. The wall jump works from zero to five. That is where I mess up, and I feel so bad for anyone who used this in the runs, and uh, I'm glad that I was able to find this and fix this, because it wasn't working in runs. You want to know why it wasn't working in runs? It's because I was inadvertently causing myself to keep getting bad subpixel values because I wasn't testing from the fortress. The fortress gives you different acceleration speed than if you beat a normal level. I don't know why it makes no sense, but... That is the brand new wall jump subpixel manipulation. That one you can 100% trust. I have been using it in runs and it has not been failing me. So, um, I know this was a lot to take in. And again, I apologize deeply for screwing anyone up or misleading. Dude, misinformation is the worst. But this is concrete. I, you can see with my graph, I went heavy on the testing. I'm just going to stop right there. I don't even feel like, you know, just get this over with so you guys know. And now you guys can move on. So... Thank you so much for watching, and I really appreciate you guys watching, and don't forget to give me a subscribe, and let's let's keep grinding so we can get that uh, 100,000 subscribers, so we can get that uh, YouTube plaque. I really want to get that YouTube plaque. So, again, sorry guys, and uh, have a good night.